co-founder of Cape and Cal. Uh, you know, it was just actually uh, coming off of uh, being unemployed and, and wanting a way to be my own boss. Uh, comics and, and geekery that I'm interested in was just a way for me to be passionate about what I could sell and keep a store running. Um, so all of the comics and toys and board games and the stuff that bring a smile to my face, I can just help other people bring a smile you know, to their faces. And uh, not only that, I know so many local artists and, and people who make this kind of stuff that I knew if I couldn't order enough from a big company, I could get my local friends to make them. Uh, make all the stuff for me, which they do, because we sell over 46 uh, local artists work through the store, so that's fun. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, I, I think it was just meant to be. <laughs> but we have the store part to also uh, support the drop-in center, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Uh, comics and geek culture have shaped my so social circle my whole life. Uh, ever since I was young, I loved Star Wars and I watched Star Trek with my dad even though I thought the original series was really boring as a kid. Um, it's all, I've always had a very vivid imagination. I, uh, it shaped my social circle because I used to get all of the, the local kids together on the, on the block and I used to direct all these games. You know, sometimes they had fantastical themes, sometimes they were just simple freeze tag, but um, you know, geek culture was very, there's uh, so much of it around, you know. I was a kid of the 80s, so we had all these cartoons, you know, from G.I. Joe to He-Man to uh, She-Ra, Princess of Power, and then the Power Rangers and Pokemon, and all of this stuff was always around us. So we had uh, Nintendo, and up until the Nintendo 64, which was huge, so everyone was always about video games and, and pods, and everything was Star Wars themed and, and superheroes, so it was just around us all the time, so yeah. It helped shape us. <laughs> so what motivated me to sell local consignment and local artist work is when I first opened I didn't have much so it helped fill my shelves as well as uh, it supports local artists and I know a lot of local people who make you know knitwear and crochet work and uh, framed art uh, in many mediums and so I knew I could sell local artist work very easily uh, and help them get the value for their work and it would help me fill the shelves in the meantime. So local consignment is great. Uh, we do a 70-30 deal, so the artist makes 70% profit on whatever they make and uh, gets them exposure and fills my shelves too. So <laughs> mutually well, beneficial. My literacy program and my, my uh, dream for a literacy program in the drop-in space of Cape and Cal is something I'm really proud of. Um, I you know, got to give all the credit to my mom because she's the one who really raised me and my brother in, in phonetic learning. Uh, of, um, of reading and uh, the passion for teaching others how to read. I've worked for other companies in the past teaching kids how to read. Um, working in the comic book industry previous to uh, my own business here, I know that comics are great for literacy. When you put pictures together with words and give those to kids, just uh, aids comprehension, which boosts their confidence and they start picking up reading material for themselves. It's not rocket science. So. Uh, putting these two things together, having a comic book store and a drop-in center where I could, you know, teach a literacy program, which is hopefully going to look like about two classes a week. Uh, my mom ran an art instruction and craft business for 11 years in Fall River. I watched her have an awesome small business when I was growing up, and that certainly gave me the drive to have my own small business and know it could work because I watched her do it. Um, with the support of friends and community behind her, which I knew I had. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll look like two classes a week of uh, me teaching kids how to read with comics. As soon as I can afford to get a staff behind the counter, then I can start teaching those classes because I pretty much have the program written. So, yeah. The uh, question of having the safe space and why it's important and uh, how it got here. Um, the safe space was a safe place with something I wanted uh, to exist in the back of my store. I purposely found a location that had a drop-in center for youth because it's certainly uh, in my heart. My mom helped that <laughs> instill that as well. Um, through her small business when I was growing up, it was uh, also, it existed partially because she wanted to provide a space for no bullying. Um, back when, you know, the bullying thing wasn't a big uh, push in schools, which I'm glad it is now. But um, there was fewer people who were on board with the fact that bullying was going on and that needed to change. And uh, so that's what I wanted to make sure was something that I integrated into my business. 
Um, it became the Leanne Witchman Safe Place because TD Bank made me part of their Make Today Matter campaign in which they heard about that, uh, that desire to want to renovate my back room and they did it for me. And then they came back and, and gave me the plaque um, in dedication to Leanne Witchman who passed away unfortunately about a couple months after I opened. She painted the whole store and the counter so you can uh, still appreciate her handiwork and there's a dedication to her over there on the wall. But um, she was the executive director and the uh, founder, co one of the co-founders and the backbone of the Nova Scotia Youth Project downtown on Brunswick Street in Halifax for 21 years and uh, was a huge influence to a lot of people. So her uh, legacy of creating safe spaces and my mom's legacy of creating safe spaces, living through this entrepreneur, uh, hopefully will help a lot of youth. I think we have already. A lot of youth uh, use the space. We use the space for birthday parties as well to help the store uh, continue to survive. But uh, there's a local video game club that meets. There's a storytellers meetup. Uh, any local youth can come in and drop in and use the space if it's not you know, being used for a program. But we have so much more that's going on. I can't even think. I integrated for the craft fairs as well. Um, yeah, and it's just, it, we have a lot of fun here. And it's a safe space, so no bullying allowed. <laughs> to get the silver uh, best comic book store for the coast. Um, got bronze last year and silver last year for best new business. And yes, I got the, the gold for activists last year. And all of these are just amazing. And I think, yeah, it, these are community voted uh, awards. So I think the community aspects of my store and the community aspects of who I am um, do contribute to, to the voting. Um, I guess people remember me from working in other places in the city and, uh, and you know, I don't give horrible customer service so people tend to remember that and, uh, you know, I just do my best to treat everybody equally, really. Um, just treat people how I would want to be treated, just respect their identity, which is just all I ask for me, so um, I just try to foster a space in which everyone can be themselves and buy the things that they like and we can all be geeks together. So I guess that's that's what uh, prompts people to click my name. Ways in which to grow the business, I have, okay, so I've implemented plan A, B, and technically C, um, which are the different steps I've done with the, the business so far, I won't get into them, but I have steps, you know, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, all the way to Z, and I can't tell you them because someone else will do them first then. But uh, I do have lots of good ideas, and they are coming up, and uh, well, I, I do something new every month, so as long as you're paying attention to the news feeds, you'll see what they are. <laughs>